What if I told you that the most valuable cloud skill isn't about mastering every AWS service or being able to pass certifications? It's about how fast you can adapt, how clearly you can communicate, and how effectively you can use AI tools to work smarter, not harder. New cloud and AI tools are being released all the time. And while that's great, here's the problem. The more tools and certifications there are, the more people get confused about what to learn. I've got a mentee, let's call him Andy. Andy is what I call a cloud skills chaser. One week he's learning Terraform, the next it's DevOps, and then it's Python. But every time he picks up something new, he forgets what he learned earlier. And that's because he's always starting over, always resetting. This kind of surface learning isn't getting him the job he wants. In fact, he's not even sure what his actual goal is, whether it's to become a solutions architect, explore cloud sales, or maybe even starting something of his own. Now, don't get me wrong. Exploring different tools and changing your career goal is fine, but you'll need to avoid falling into something called the shiny object syndrome. It's when having too many options actually keeps you stuck, when you constantly feel like you're starting from zero. Even though you've been putting in the hours. And so in this video, I'm going to help you narrow down what you'll need to learn by sharing the top five cloud skills that will no longer be needed in the next few years. Some of them are real skills to avoid, while others are more like mindset shifts. Before we get into it, let me share with you something actionable you can do for the week. I partnered up with an AI learning company called Outskill to bring you free access to the 3D AI mastermind happening this weekend. It's a 16 hour live workshop where you'll learn to automate workflows, build AI agents, and generate videos and images all by using using practical hands-on tools. Normally, this training will cost you about $900, but as a Take with Lucy subscriber, you can grab a free seat using the link in the description below. When you sign up, you'll also get content worth around $5,000, including a prompt bible, a roadmap to making money with AI, and a personalized AI toolkit builder. Their workshops have helped over 4 million people globally, and I've personally attended them myself. The sessions run on Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. EST, so mark it on your calendar and join their WhatsApp community for updates. Now let's get back to the video. The first cloud skill that will become useless is relying on the AWS console to manually provision infrastructure. I'll be honest, I used to do this a lot when I was first getting started. The console feels easy, visual, and familiar. In fact, when we all started learning cloud, the console was probably the first thing we started with, whether that's the AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud one. But once you start building serious infrastructure, especially for production level environments, it often becomes a real bottleneck. It's slow, it's prone to errors, and it's hard to reproduce and share what you've built. If if someone else on your team needs to replicate your setup, they're basically stuck half guessing. That's why more companies these days are expecting you to be familiar with infrastructure as code tools like Terraform, the AWS CDK, and CloudFormation. These tools allow you to deploy cloud environments in a version controlled and repeatable way. In fact, according to a HashiCorp survey, 90% of organizations using infrastructure as code says that it speeds up provisioning and reduces misconfigurations. That's 90%. What's also really interesting is that nowadays with tools like Amazon Q and Claude, you can generate infrastructure as code templates within seconds. Instead of clicking through the console to configure a web application with EC2, load balancers, and RDS, you can just generate a CloudFormation or Terraform template using AI and then deploy it that way. And so while the AWS console will still be there as a visual interface, the skill of clicking around to deploy things will soon become useless. I mean, I'd still learn how to do it, of course, but make sure you learn how to use something like Terraform or CloudFormation if you haven't already. Now, the second cloud skill that's becoming useless is being able to pass cloud certifications. Certifications, especially the ones in IT, have developed quite a strong reputation over the past few years. Job seekers and people working in the industry would proudly showcase their certification badges on LinkedIn and their resume. Why? Because we all know how long it takes to study for a certification exam. AWS ones in particular can be quite challenging. I mean, if I count the amount of hours I spent studying for certifications, it will probably be close to a thousand. However, this skill of being able to pass certifications is soon going to be useless. And that's because of two reasons, both related to the rise of AI. Firstly, certifications will no longer be an accurate test of someone's ability. The exams focus a lot on memorizing certain concepts and architectural patterns and less on the practical hands-on side of cloud. Unless certifications can somehow change from being multiple choice to 100% focused on building real solutions, it will continue to decline in credibility. Secondly, AI is removing the need to memorize facts and figures. Knowing how many AWS regions there are or the exact steps to setting up a service is turning into more of a party trick than a practical skill. ChatGPT, Amazon Q, or even built-in AI assistants can help you get accurate answers within seconds. Now, you might be wondering, should I still get certified? My answer is yes, but just as a starting point. In fact, having two to three associate level certifications is more than enough. When we think back to my mentee Andy, he had five AWS certifications and also an Azure Fundamentals one. But when he tried my beginner and intermediate cloud projects, he really struggled. And that's because he managed to pass the certifications by just memorizing content 
concepts, not by actually applying them. This lack of deeper knowledge was also reflected in his interviews. More and more companies are moving towards project-based hiring. They look at your portfolio, your GitHub repo, and the case studies you provide. Having five times AWS certified listed on your resume will start to matter less. If you're not too sure where to start with building projects, you can check out my hands-on courses on Zero to Cloud. I have beginner, intermediate, and advanced level AWS projects to help you build real cloud skills. These projects you can also add to your portfolio and the courses come with technical support as well so that you never get stuck. Okay, the third cloud skill that's slowly fading away is using cloud without tapping into AI tools. A few years ago, this wasn't even something you needed to think about. You'd open up the console, set up your applications and click deploy. But nowadays, the expectation has changed. If you're working in the cloud, people are expecting you to speed up development using AI. I mean, it makes sense, right? Why build things slowly when you can build them 10 times faster with AI? This could be through infrastructure as code, Amazon Q, or by adding features directly in your app. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say you're a developer helping your company process customer feedback in Amazon S3. Previously, you would use traditional analytics to visualize it. This could include taking an average of your customer ratings or perhaps doing some sentiment analysis. But with new AI tools like Amazon Bedrock, you can go much further. You can create an interface that allows both technical and non-technical staff to ask questions about the feedback. They can also ask conversational questions and even auto-generate product recommendations. The main point is that AI tools are now commoditized and accessible to pretty much anyone. So in order for companies to stay ahead, they'll need to adopt AI before the competitor does. I mentioned in a previous video that in 2025, you'll hear a lot of people saying that AI won't take your job, but the person using AI tools will. In 2026, it's going to be even more extreme. Cloud jobs will become AI jobs and people will be expected to work alongside AI agents. The best cloud architects and engineers I know are trying to specialize in AI to prepare for this shift. For example, making the transition from a general solutions architect to a generative AI specialist solutions architect. And so if you're still learning cloud in isolation without trying out new AI features or tools, make sure you start now. I'd recommend starting small by building things like an AI powered chatbot and then adding it to your portfolio. The fourth cloud skill that's becoming useless is following step-by-step -step run books without actually understanding what's happening underneath. A lot of cloud support engineers and junior DevOps roles still rely heavily on internal documentation to get through their tasks. Things like step one, check CloudWatch logs for errors, step two, restart the EC2 instance, and step three, if the issue continues, escalate to tier two. I mean, it works, but it's also very procedural. You're not solving the problem from first principles. You're just following a set of instructions that someone else has already figured out. And here's the thing, AI already has the capability to handle this kind of work. Even if it hasn't been fully rolled out across every company yet, it's going to come. Internal co-pilots, automated agents, and AI-based incidents responses are being built right now. They're going to be able to do things like read documentation, reference run books, and apply the issue all without humans needing to step in. This is one of the big reasons why many software engineers have been laid off recently. The ones who are building internal tools or repeating the same fixes over and over again are the ones eliminated because that type of work is being automated. So if your job is about executing steps from a guidebook, it's going to become irrelevant. The future of these roles will look very different. You'll need to be the one improving automation workflows, designing systems that self-recover, and identifying the deeper pattern behind an outage. The skill to avoid here is treating troubleshooting and building cloud applications like a to-do list. And the skill to build here is knowing how to prevent the problems in the first place and teaching AI how to handle it for you. All right, the final cloud skill to avoid is tying yourself too closely to one cloud provider. Instead of learning just AWS or Azure services, you'll need to start thinking in a more cloud agnostic way. This is an issue I see all the time. A learner gets comfortable with Amazon S3, Lambda, DynamoDB, pretty much everything they've learned that ties towards AWS. But the problem is when they work on new projects or face unfamiliar problems, they can't really adapt because their knowledge is on specific services, not on how to design systems that meet real life business or technical goals. Being cloud agnostic doesn't mean you'll need to learn every platform. It means you'll need to understand the core building blocks of the cloud, such as compute, storage, networking, security, automation, as well as how to apply them in different contexts. It also doesn't mean you'll need to learn multiple clouds. Instead, I'd combine one cloud with one adjacent skill. For example, AWS and Python, AWS and Terraform, or Azure and DevOps. That way, you're not spread too thin across multiple platforms, but through these multiple technologies, you're able to build transferable skills. And there you have it, five cloud skills that will become useless, mostly due to AI. Please let me know in the comments what skills you're building this year, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.